All right, another question? Hi, Katie Neal, Porter Novelli. Um, you talked a little bit about how people are returning more to family values, more to the home um, in, in times of crisis. You mentioned things like camping and other activities. What other types of trends do you think we'll start to see out of that resurgence of the home? Yeah, I think it's a great question. You see a lot of multi-generational families. First of all, teenagers have no reason to leave their parents' home any longer because their parents are very liberal about the teenager's sex life. So the primary reason that young adults always left their parents' home was to have a sex life. Their parents are actually more liberal than they are. So in their 20s, there's no reason for a young adult to leave their parents' home. They're happy to stay. Um, there's a shortage of money. Multi-generations will live under one roof, and they'll swap chores, and they'll swap. So you're going to see multi-generational households. You're going to see um, the staycation. I don't think you're going to see a lot of family vacations. A lot of vacations far away from home. You're going to see one, what I'm going to call one tank vacations. One tank in one direction and one tank back. You see a lot more ritualistic events, though. Uh, 25th anniversaries, college or high school reunions, people who are going to get together for big ritualistic events, that's going to be the things they put their time and money into. You see a lot more people um, putting time and energy into things that are holiday related. Um, not necessarily big commercial holidays. I think you're going to see next year's Christmas be a total disaster in terms of gift giving. You may see a lot more of celebrations in terms of big meals homemade cooking, um, but you're not going to see a lot of um, commercial gift giving, not a lot of things being wrapped up, not a lot of um, snail mail greeting cards. So I think you're going to see a lot more um, celebrating. We think you see a rise in, in people, um, anybody who sort of has enough money to do so having pets, people having dogs and cats, people um, looking for things they can really care about, nurture, and love. They're looking for emotional support right now. Uh, <clears throat> that was terrific. It's Troy Young from Video Egg, and uh, I, I'm not going to let my children have sex at home, so they leave. <laughs> uh, so that's a good point. Thanks. It's a uh, takeaway from it. I, uh, I'm, I'm curious what your point of view is on and the sort of uh, media disruption that goes along with uh, a lot of the trends. Now, you talked about people processing their information, the personal editor, collaborative media, kind of personal through via personal consumption. Um, but um, there's a you know a couple of really disruptive things that are happening with you know the changes in uh, media buying activities and how that the consequential effects on mass media and our ability to fund journalists and and pay for programming. I think uh, a real disruption at the local level via newspapers and local media that's affecting how small firms promote themselves. Um, and, and how we get information in, in our community. And I'm, there's a lot of issues in terms of how media gets reshaped that I think is really interesting. And I wondered what your point of view was. Yeah, it's a, it's a shocking time, actually. I mean, to be in Seattle yesterday as the announcement should have come down about what the future was going to be in the newspaper. I mean, to deal with what happened in Colorado last week where the newspaper is sort of going to disappear. Um, it's frightening because what's, who is going to fund the role of the whistleblower? Who's going to fund um, the community news? Where's the community news going to come from? The flip side is you have to ask yourself, where were all of us as marketeers and as business people while Craig flourished for the last decade? I mean, how many meetings did we go to while people sort of rolled their eyes about Craigslist as the classifieds sort of shrunk away and as that entire category of business that essentially funded the local media really disappeared? I think we're now seeing newspapers really be seemingly obliterated. The next thing that's going to go, in my opinion, is going to be local TV and then um, national print in terms of magazine. And we're going to replace national print with direct-to-consumer messaging, probably via uh, video serving. And how's all that going to happen? I, I mean, I think that business was unwilling to change quickly enough and entrepreneurs with visions kind of got in there and got ahead of the game and really managed to wipe out uh, categories of business that is really kind of unimaginable. I, I mean, I was told five years ago the newspaper publishing group do not discuss Craigslist, it upsets people. So I didn't, and it upset people, I guess. And, and here's where we are. Um, but I do think it's, it's highly disruptive, and what's even more disruptive is 
most people who watch TV zap out their commercials now. Because they don't watch TV at the time of day the TV was actually programmed. They come back and they watch it on their own terms. So unless they're watching to watch the commercials as they might do on the Super Bowl, most of them don't see the key commercials that were really bringing them that kind of programming. Um, we've seen maybe HBO effectively bring us programming we're willing to pay for, but most of the other programming, we've never been taught a lesson that we ought to pay for it. And so I, I think we are at a breaking point where there is room for something, some entity to step in, be completely combustible, tell people it has to change, and show them the way. But right now, it's not happening. And it's not happening, and I don't see any obvious and likely candidates stepping in and picking up either that revenue or the or providing the solution. Certainly, Craigslist set out there without a competitor for far too many years for me to believe that anybody took it as seriously as they should have. And nobody else, nobody, nobody else came along and aggregated locally what was going on city by city as they sort of mopped up the classified category. If you look at it right now, I'm going to argue too, anybody who likes a Sunday newspaper ought to just sit back and say three things. I like my Sunday newspaper. I don't right now shop at a department store, but Sunday newspapers are largely funded by the Sunday Rotas and Sunday newspapers that come from department stores. Department stores are in really big trouble. That's number two. Number three, I could... Um, probably envision a time when I would do all my shopping at whatever department stores I was going to shop at exclusively through their dot com. It's, it's a whole other accident waiting to happen. And again, I don't think anybody stepped in and said, how am I going to either monetize all of this and turn it into a business, or how am I going to protect the news and protect all of those um, promotional outlets for all those businesses that need access to all of those readers' eyes. I don't think anybody's looking at that right now in a smart enough and an effective enough way. Because the opportunity for um, direct commerce, when I read an article about what someone is wearing, and I have the opportunity to purchase that item directly in a non-commercial way, but basically contextual commerce never has been activated. You can go all the way back into the early 1990s and see people writing about it and understand that sort of the science was there to be able to do that. But the consuming population wasn't there and the media didn't step in, and everybody said it was science fiction was too soon, and I think it made it too soon, too soon, too soon, too late. And I'm not really sure what's going to step in now to fund what we really need, which is valuable news. I think advertisers also are going to, um, by the way, pull back and say, if you can't deliver to me the act of engaged eyeballs, you're going to actually shop. Why should I put my money into your media outlet? I have better ways to communicate with my people. I have better ways to provide them with better quality experiences. I'm better off sending them text messages. Or at least I know if they opened it or not. And I know what they did once they opened it. Did they forward it? Did they click on it? Where were they standing in terms of geographically? What did they do with it? I think there's, there's probably many other ways for them to get around it today. <laughs>